For 10 years, Jerry Mark Bright had been one of the Big Ten's best officials. He had worked the Rose Bowl and survived the first national tirade of Coach Woody Hayes. But when he joined Jim Tunney's crew in 1976, he was as nervous as any other NFL rookie. I was a line judge. My first game was all the way out in Seattle. I was so ready, I was so prepared. And I was concentrating on that two minute warning, concentrating, concentrating. When it came time, I killed the clock. I came running into Jim. I said, Jim, two. He said, come closer. He said, what are you giving me? I said, I'm killing the clock and I'm giving you the two minute warning. He said, your signal for the clock was excellent. He said, your two minute warning signal was perfect. He said, now return to the sideline and give me that signal with two minutes left in the second quarter, you dummy, not the first. Mark Bright's gaffe was soon forgotten. But two years later, he was part of one of the greatest plays in league history, the Holy Roller. It was my first nationally televised game as a referee. Looked up at the clock, 10 seconds remaining in the game, and I thought, boy, you did it this time. Almost a perfect game. People are going to know who I am. I was excited on national television. I said to myself, what could possibly happen? 10 seconds left. The ball in the 14. Oakland trails 20 to 14. The crowd takes up a chant of defense. Stabler back. Here comes the rush. He sidesteps. Can he throw? He can't. The ball flipped forward as low as a wild scramble. Two seconds on the clock. Casper grabbing the ball. It is low a fumble. Casper has recovered in the end zone. The Oakland Raiders have scored on the most zany, unbelievable, absolutely impossible dream of a play. Madden is on the field. He wants to know if it's real. They said, yes, get your big butt out of here. He does. There's nothing real in the world anymore. The Raiders won the football game. This one will be relived forever. I saw the ball come out. I ruled fumble. Well, I didn't see the actual release, but the concussion, the ball popped out. It was batted, it was muffed, it was kicked. I looked around, I saw my sideline officials both signaling touchdown. I turned to the press box and signaled touchdown. Still blows my mind how the referees could not uh, see what it was or, or uh, discern exactly what happened. I cannot think of, of, of a more outrageous uh, form of, of outright Raider thievery and cheating that, that's ever occurred. And it was one of those things that you, maybe you can't do that, but the rules say that you can do that, so you can do that, and if you don't want to do that, then go change the rule. And that's exactly what they did. They went and changed the rule. Shortly after the game, a T-shirt was stamped and sold in San Diego, and I heard they sold 50,000 T-shirts. Working the NFL's biggest games would become second nature to Mark Wright who worked four Super Bowls, more than any other referee, although his first one didn't start off so well. LT, way to go! Super Bowl 17, my first Super Bowl. A special coin was to be used for the toss, commemorative coin. Elroy Crazy Legs Hirsch would bring it out to the middle of the field. The helmets on the coin are tails. Out I walked, followed by my crew. Out came the Miami captains on my left. Washington on my right. Feisman, the spokesman for Washington, Kuchenberg is going to call the toss. The side with the two helmets is the head. Who's going to call the toss? Number 67 calls the toss. Up went the coin. Tails, he called, and I said, you called Tails, Captain, just like I always do. Tails is the call. Head. Washington wins the toss. And on that split second, I forgot that the helmets were tail. It looked just like two heads. So I looked at Theismann, I said, it's heads, you win the toss. Hirsch looked at me and he said, didn't you say the helmets were tails? Theismann stepped toward me with a sullen sneer. He said, when I was at Notre Dame, you used to work our games. He said, you stunk then. How could they have selected you for this game? You can't even toss the coin. Earning a postseason assignment in 23 straight seasons as a referee and replay assistant, Mark Bright became a celebrity, publishing three books, writing an internet column for the Chicago Tribune, giving motivational speeches, and appearing in major Hollywood movies. And national TV commercials. Fans who leave the game before it's over just to beat the trap. What if you think you left the oven on? Why would the oven be on?
Jerry Markbright may be the hardest working man in show business, but his greatest memories still come from his days on the field. The 1990 NFC Championship game played in San Francisco, Giants at San Francisco. It was just one of those games where you used every bit of common sense that you had, along with all of your technical knowledge, to have a ball game that was so spectacular. And at the end of the game, with the Giants down by a point, with three seconds left, Bill Parcells called his last timeout. And as referee, I went over and I said, Coach, that's your last timeout. And he said, I'm gonna tell you two things. He said, first of all, he said, tell your crew you have worked a magnificent football game. He said, and the second thing is, he said, in three seconds, I am going to be the greatest coach that ever lived or the biggest bum. Giants are trailing by a point. It all depends on Matt Barr. Snap, spot, kick is away, it's got the distance. It is good, good. I remember the, the ball going through the uprights. I turn and flash the touchdown signal, and I just got such a rush because the game was just spectacular. And I worked 461 NFL games, and that game jumps out. I mean, I had four Super Bowls, and I had a lot of exciting games, but that was the game. Through his 16 years as an executive member of the NFLRA and his current role as head trainer for NFL referees, Mark Bright continues to influence the game and the profession he loves. It's the most wonderful feeling in the world for an official. Because prior to the snap, after everything is done, we've counted all the men on the field and we've given the ready for play and they break the huddle and they're coming out and I get myself set and there's that quiet instant when the crowd is hushed and everything is motionless just for an instant. That tremendous rush of this play is going to start and this play is its own universe. Every play is everything you've ever learned. Everything is stored in your head. You've got everything. You don't know what's going to happen on the play. And you're preparing yourself by not thinking about what could happen, but just getting ready at peace for an instant, just before the ball is snapped. It's the most wonderful couple of seconds that I ever spent in my life. And just think you get to do that 160 times in a game. <laughs>